Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland and today we have another review for you. We have the Derek Spear or DSD Pro Short Throw Sequential Shifter with a bent knob option. So let's get started. Now there have been a lot of reviews on the DSD Shifter done before written as well as video on the internet. We've seen people using them on their rigs. Derek has been selling this unit for quite some time now even though there has been some revisions to them as they go along. This is the short throw pro shifter with the bent handle. Now I like the short throw instead of long throws on my shifters. I have the ARC carbon that I have set up for a short throw also. I wasn't going to review this but some folks asked me if I would do a review on the DSD sequential because I'd already done the ARC carbon. They just want to see what the differences are between the shifters. So I thought oh, well, that was, that's a good idea. I dropped Derek a line to see if he could get one out to me to review and he did. Again, Derek is a great guy to deal with and he'll do anything for you and he usually makes some very good products. Now, there are three bolts in the housing on this and this is a metal housing. And the three bolts I'm sure add a lot to the structural integrity of this whole assembly. The bottom bolt and nut I'm assuming is going to be where the pivot point is on the shifter but hey we're going to find that out later. And the two top bolts actually bolt everything together but they also bolt this unit to your rig. And I suggest just like any other shifter you bolt it directly to your rig in a very nice stiff non-flexing mounting point because these kind of shifters you want no flex at all in the mounting that you attach them to. Not only that, but it feels tons better when you have it. It's th nothing's moving except the shifter knob itself. It really adds to the realism. So you have to mount this straight up. There's no facility for mounting on the bottom, so you have to mount this in a sideways mount. And that is one thing that some people don't like about it, I've been told. But, you know, if you're going to be building your rig out and you're going to be modding your rig all the time. I know I, I've done a few mods to mine. As you, as if you've seen some videos, you know. So it's really not that big of a deal. You just got to make sure you get to a nice solid point. Uh, and then of course we got the USB B type connector on the bottom. And anything else? One of the surprises about this shifter to me is the handle, the shifter knob. Now if you saw the ARC carbon review I did, that had a cheapy plastic thin light handle on it that I really didn't like as you know if you saw that review but this is different this actually feels good in your hand and I'm really surprised about it it's, it's, it feels like it's good good weight well I'll tell you let's take it off real quick let's take a look at it like we like to do here at the garage and the reason it's so solid and, and, and it has a nice weight to it, it's got this nice long brass insert in this handle that had the threads, of course, that match the threads there. And it, it's got some nice weight to it. And it's real important to have a knob with nice weight to it, to me anyway. It really adds to the, the feeling of the shift. It, it makes things feel more dense. It's solid, I guess, is what I'm, I'm, the word I'm reaching for here. And I have actually on my, I had a Honda S2000, I had a, uh, and I replaced that with a nice heavy ball shifter. It really made a difference in the feel. Now, you, you don't have to use this knob, although I could see if I was using this shifter and this was the only sequential I had, I would probably keep using this knob. It seems fine to me. But you can, of course, because these are standard threads, mount uh, any aftermarket shifter knob to it also. Just make sure it's long enough to take all these threads, because if not, then you'll have to put a nut under it and lock it lock it with that nut and have some exposed threads, which probably really doesn't matter. It's just one of those things that I like to dress up my stuff as much as possible. <laughs> but then again, some of my stuff looks pretty ragged on my rig. So yeah, the handle is really a surprise to me. And just holding in my hand and, and working the mechanism, it feels like a pretty good shifting mechanism. But we're really not going to be able to tell until we get it mounted solidly to something and driving the car to see how it really feels. Anything else we want to talk about here? I guess that's about it. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull the handle off, we'll pull the cover off the top here, and take a look inside and see if we can see how this shifter is working. So we'll do that next. Now we have the top of the shifter off, and I wanted to show you guys how this shifter works. But unfortunately, what I'm looking at here, you really can't see 
down inside exactly how everything is working very well. Uh, we can see this much. I can show you how the, if we look here, the shifter, when you shift it, you can see it hits that threaded rod in there as a stop. And of course, if we go the other way, the same thing is happening. But past that, I can't really show you much. So that's not good enough for a sim racing garage review. We're going to have to take this thing apart. So we'll go ahead and pull the shifter completely apart. We'll lay all the parts out. And I'm sure then we'll be able to better see how this shifter works. So we'll do that and get right back to you. All right. Now this is what I'm talking about here. This is how you actually take a good look at a shifter. We can see much better now how everything works. First, the housing is an aluminum housing with the sliding door on it. And these panels, or the walls, or the real walls of the actual shifter, fit together like so. And all that slides in, of course, with the shifter inside of it. All this slides in as one unit. And what gives it the structural integrity is these spacers here. And they all, of course, this is all drilled to fit all these spacers on the top, so this all sits down on top of everything. These material here, I'm not sure what it is. It almost sounds metallic when you hit it with a bolt. And I know it's not metal. It's some kind of very, very tough material. I'm not sure what it is. And you can see it's got the information for the rear vision 7 on there for the Pro Short Throw Shifter. On both sides, the patterns are exactly the same. And these act as spacers, and they're just threaded rod with 7 16 nuts on them. And they sit in there respective holes here. These two right here actually act as a spacer and as the shifter stops. Remember when we were looking down the top of it with this cover off, you could see the actual shifter rod here was bumping up against these two. Alright, also we'll look at uh, the actual plastic here. That's the bottom where the USB port was. I took all that off. This is the top. And it's got that carbon fiber look to it. And there's a, this piece of plastic with a carbon fiber, I'm not sure if that's a sticker underneath or what, and it fits right inside of that. And this doesn't have to be tough stuff anyway because all the structural integrity is in this box and with these plates put together. And once the plates are put together and you slide all this assembly inside this box, you actually take these nuts here and spin them so they spread out and they'll push both sides of these plates up against the box, which gives it good structural integrity and, and makes it very tight in there. And then of course, once we put our bolts back in, the two for the top and the one here that actually goes through the pivot point of the shaft and bolt it all together, it's very, very tight, very, very stiff. Right, so let's take a look at the actual shifter rod or shaft. And now we can clearly see the spring there. Almost looks like a valve spring. And there's a washer on top up here. And it's all, you can see there's a ton of lithium grease around here to keep everything nice and lubed up. And this, on the top here of this washer, I'm not sure what this material is, but this is another bar. And its function is to pretty much be a cam follower. And what I mean by that is, if you look at the hole inside this plate, you see it's oblong and this, well, I'm calling the cam follower. I'm not sure if that's the right term or not, but that's kind of the function it's doing here because it's following that pattern. And it sits right there in the middle when you're in the middle position of the shifter. And when you push the shifter forward, it shifts, it forces this bar to compress the spring as it goes forward. Because remember, this point doesn't move. So when you shift it forward, this pattern here forces that bar to go down which compresses the spring, which gives us that shifting feel that we feel that you saw when I was just had it in my hand doing the shifts. And of course, it doesn't matter if you go forwards or backwards. It's actually a, a very simple design, but very effective design. And I like simple because it's easy to fix if uh, we ever have a problem with it. And I've had a lot of problems with different things as far as mechanicals in my life working on cars. So I like the simple stuff. It's easy to fix. But I'm not saying this is going to ever break. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> robust, actually. I really like the uh, structural integrity of the whole assembly once you have it in the box and tightened up. 
So it's pretty simple, easy to understand. And the shaft here actually pivots on this bolt, which is a machine solid bolt that has threads on the end. And of course that fits right in there. And you can see there's actually a little bit of, a little bit of play in there. But you don't want this bolt to be really tight in there with a lot of friction because then that will cause friction on your shifter. But once this is inside the assembly and it's all assembled and the spring is compressed, it actually compresses down against this pivot bolt. So it, you don't have any upwards or downward movement as we saw in the shifter once everything's in the assembly. All right, and then again, this is a tough bent shaft he's got here. I like how everything is nice and solid. I don't have any complaints about that. All right, so now let's just take a quick look at the electronics package and how it functions. We'll just pull one of these off. He's got these spacers on top of some steel pins here. Put those aside. And we'll pull this off without taking the pins out too, hopefully. Again, this is a bit fiddly, and I recommend you guys do not do this to your shifters. But here at the Sim Racing Garage, we do this so we can show you everything about whatever we're reviewing. And you can see these things just fall over, but once they're tightened up inside the assembly, you don't have a problem. Right, so let's look at this. This is a Wipeng micro switch. It's a HK14, in case uh, you micro switch fans out there wanted to know. It has a cool little roller here. It acts as, again, as a cam like follower against the coils on the springs itself. So when we push this shifter forward and this bar on the top here compresses down on the spring, of course, the coils of the spring move down also. And when they move down, this little cam here will get compressed. And that's what causes the switch. And that makes your shift. Pretty neat, huh? I like stuff like that. Also, we have the Derek Spears, as usual, his own USB board. I mean, we all know that Derek Spears makes a lot of electronics boards, and he has the guys that know how to manufacture these things pretty well. And it's basically just a USB board, not much to see here with a, a, a chip on the top. All right, so now let's get this back on here. And what we'll do, is there anything else I want to talk about on the shifter? I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I think we covered it all on the internals. You guys can now see how everything works. So now what I'm going to do is put it all back together. And once I get it back together, we're I've made a custom plate out of some aluminum over there to mount it to my rig. And we'll get it mounted and take it for a ride and see how it works. All right, we are in the Skippy or the Skip Barber Open Wheel Race Car at Summit Point Raceway. We have the DSD sequential shifter already mounted, and we'll go ahead and drop in the car and do a few laps or a couple laps. And as you can see, I have the shifter close up. It's superimposed on the rest of the driving picture. So you can see both things at once. Now, using a sequential in the Skippy car is pretty authentic because they do have sequential shifters in them. In iRacing, it's quicker to use the clutch to shift than to take my foot off the accelerator and then shift on the upshifts. So I use the clutch when I upshift, but downshifting you can rev match just by blipping the throttle. And that's not a big problem. At least in iRacing, that's how it is. All right, first thing I noticed about this shifter is the handle or the knob. It really feels good. And as we saw before previously in the part of the video, you could see that it had that nice brass insert almost all the way down the whole handle length. And that gives it a nice bit of weight. And the size of the knob as far as the diameter is very nice too. It really fits the hand well. I really like the handle in the shifter. I was actually again surprised uh, how good that felt. So now I'm using the shifter, and I also noticed that the spring has good tension. I suppose most people would be happy with that spring tension, but I would like to be able to dial that up a notch and maybe find another spring and put it in there. And I might try that. Because it, even though it's, it's got good tension to it, I, I just like something a little heavier. But as we saw in the video when I had it apart, you can actually go in and do that without too much trouble. 
and put another spring in and try that. Of course, you couldn't go too hard of a spring because I don't know how much tension that those side plates that actually hold the follower cam and actually gives you, it compresses the spring when you give it a push either way. I wouldn't want to put too much pressure on that. I'm not sure that what the wear capabilities are of that. Anyway, I'm having fun using this shifter. It's very positive with the stops. The spring compresses nicely when you're using the motion back or forward. And the stops are very positive. I really don't have too much to say as far as what I don't like about the shifter. It does the job and just gets it done. Kind of just gets on with it. Doesn't give you any problems. It never missed a shift with it unless I missed the shift myself. I don't know about you guys, but I miss shifts every once in a while in the excitement of racing. I kind of like this shifter. If I keep the shifter and make it the shifter that I use on my rig, which I'm not sure I will, then I, I would mount it a different way than you see here. This is just for the video. And there's a 124.6, so that's pretty good with this shifter. If I was using paddles, I could be a bit quicker, like most things, if you don't have to take your hands off the wheels when you're shifting. and you grab a knob, it's a little bit easier. All right, well, I guess that's enough of me running around the track and you seeing the shifter work. Obviously, it does work. So we'll go ahead and just end it up here and get to our final thoughts. Now for final thoughts on the DSD sequential shifter. This is Derek's top-of-the-line pro short throw sequential. And as usual, my first comment would have to be the price. This shifter runs about $200 with shipping in the USA. Like most custom sim racing gear, it is expensive. And now that we've had a chance to look inside and see what type of components make up this shifter, you'll have to decide for yourself whether or not it's worth it. Now for the pros. I really like the stock handle that comes on this shifter. The heavy brass insert that he uses in this handle gives the shifter heft and enhances the feel of the shifts. The diameter of the handle just feels right when you have it in your hand. The shifting action is predictable, repeatable, and precise. I never missed a shift while using it. <laughs> At least not any shifts due to the fall of the shifter. I'd like to have a heavier spring in this shifter as it makes shifts uh, require a bit more effort. Now, most people that get this shifter will probably be happy with the current spring's tension. It would just be a personal preference kind of thing for me. Overall, this shifter does what it's supposed to do. It just gets on with the job of making dependable shifts. If you're looking for a sequential shifter at this price point, I can definitely recommend Derek's shifters. And as most of you in the sim community already know, Derek is the man when it comes to standing behind his products. If you ever had any issues with it, I have no doubt he would take care of it with no questions asked. So that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel or check back often for more reviews on some great sim racing gear. I'm Barry Rowland, and thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel.